for those of y'all that have been here for a little while, uh, more specifically from before the season was over. Remember what we said going into this offseason? We said that this would probably be the craziest Ravens offseason ever, ever. I know when Ray Lewis flirted with leaving the Ravens, that was that was crazy. When Ed Reed actually left the Ravens and joined the Texans, that was crazy. But this offseason, I think this offseason, all the craziness that has been going on, it may top that. And maybe because social media is in a different era right now, then maybe that's why. But anyway, the season, this offseason has been crazy. So uh, we got some significant updates with the Baltimore Ravens too talk about with Lamar Jackson, with DeAndre Hopkins, with Odell Beckham Jr. We'll, we'll start with Odell Beckham Jr. Um, because there's some allegations going on with Odell Beckham Jr. right now um, that I, I don't think anything will come of it, but hey, you, you never know. Um, but it is significant allegations, but we, we'll see. We'll see. One thing that I have learned on here um, is to, especially with stuff like this, you can't jump to conclusions. You really can't. You, you, you got to wait out the process. Like if it was something football related, hey, jump to all the conclusions you want to based off of this, that, and the third. But with stuff like this, you got to just let it play out and see how it goes. So we'll see what happens with that. But apparently Odell and his camp, they said, hey, ain't got nothing to do with us. We wasn't involved. That didn't happen. And apparently they said that there was some video surveillance that showed the opposite of what the allegation said. So we'll see what happens with that. But anyway... Josina Anderson, um, and I was just going through the episodes of her podcast, looking through all like the titles and stuff and what they were about. I'm like, man, I, I like Josina Anderson. She like another like she's she like a Ravens reporter because she covered the Ravens a lot, like a whole lot. And with her, it makes sense because like she she been covering Odell from from jump, like from when he was a giant. Um, and, and then she's covered him throughout his entire career, and then for him to join the Ravens, and she's been covering a lot with the whole Lamar Jackson thing. Um, so it just makes sense that she just, she got a lot of love for the Ravens, but she, she, she covers them in extensively, attentively, and all that good stuff, whatever, whatever other word you want to throw in there. But anyway, Josina Anderson, um, she did confirm. She confirmed it. So Mike Lombardi put it out there on his podcast, and then he went on Pat McAfee's show and doubled down on it. He was like, hey, yeah, hey, Lamar Jackson, he asked about DeAndre Hopkins and Odell Beckham Jr. So he initially put that out, but then Josina Anderson, she was like, yeah, he did. He did. But she, 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 she changed it. She, she said something different because Mike Lombardi said that um, Lamar Jackson asked uh, the Ravens to get DeAndre Hopkins and Odell Beckham Jr., and he said, then we'll talk. Then we can start talking. So obviously about the contract. But Josina Anderson said there was no ultimatum. She said there was no ultimatum. So she, she did say Lamar Jackson asked the Ravens to check in on both DeAndre Hopkins and Odell Beckham Jr. But she said that there was no ultimatum with it. So it wasn't like a, all right, if you do this, then I'll do that. But she said she's basically saying Lamar was just like, hey, y'all do this. Huh? Silence. So <laughs> anyway, um, so that, that, that was cool. That, that's nice to know that like it's official. And I mean, even before Justina Anderson confirmed it, it does seem like it's official um, because based off of what the Ravens did and how the Ravens did it to acquire Odell Beckham Jr. But with DeAndre Hopkins, there has been a lot of talk about DeAndre Hopkins, um, a lot of rumors about the Ravens and DeAndre Hopkins. What's going to happen with that? What could happen with that? Are the Ravens really interested in him? Are they pursuing him? And of course, uh, over the past couple of days, we've been giving you all the updates about everything that Pac-Man Jones has been saying uh, in regards to the Ravens and their interest in one DeAndre Hopkins. Because first he talked about uh, when Pat McAfee was on there talking about different teams that were interested in DeAndre Hopkins. First, Pac-Man Jones was like, wait, you forgot one team there. You forgot one. And that's the Ravens. Don't forget about them. And then the very next day, he was like, hey, it's a strong possibility. Not strong, but strong with a K. And you know, when we say that, then that's real right there, baby. That's real. That's, that's when like something is a real, real significant possibility. So he, he got a lot of us hyped with that Pac-Man. Joe was like, all right, Pac-Man, hey, let's let it be. Make it happen. But then Josina Anderson sort of took it for a turn in the podcast. Uh, yesterday, um, she and she slipped it in there real, real smooth. She slipped it in there real smooth, but she talked about how the Ravens right now are not actively pursuing DeAndre Hopkins. But there was a little caveat in there. 
She said they're not actively pursuing him um, at his current uh, contract. So basically letting it be known like, hey, Ravens are interested. This is what I took from it when I heard it. Um, because it was right before she was asking uh, Calais, because she had Calais Campbell on there. She said it was right before she was asking Calais Campbell about John Harbaugh and Lamar Jackson and how he thinks things are going to go down. But she slipped it in there real quick. Um, but she said that, uh, yeah, they're not currently pursuing DeAndre Hopkins with that current salary. So this, I, it doesn't mean they're out on DeAndre Hopkins, but I think they would be in on Arizona being like consuming a lot of that salary if something was to go down. Because the Arizona Cardinals, they obviously want to move off of DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, and the Baltimore Ravens, from everything that we've been hearing, it seems like they want to move on to DeAndre Hopkins. Um, but it's got to be some give and take. And I know I've been seeing a lot of it on Twitter. A lot of people putting out stuff that... Seems like it's le it could be legitimate. They've been putting out some real good trade offers and some trade packages. And it seems like it's a, it's a bit consistent going around with so many Ravens fans and whatnot about what the Ravens could possibly offer to the, the Cardinals, what the Cardinals could offer in return to the Ravens for DeAndre Hopkins to be swapped to go from Arizona to Baltimore. And my guy, JT, he said it best uh, when I was texting him the other day. Uh, he brought up, he said, hey, man, well, well last time, the Ravens got a man at receiver from the Cardinals. It worked out. And it certainly did. Like a man, not, not just any receiver now, but a grown man at wide receiver, a grown man at wide receiver from the Cardinals. It worked out. That was obviously Anquan Bolden. And you see how much like he helped Joe Flacco out. A lot. A whole lot. Like Lamar has already done a lot, but imagine with a DeAndre Hopkins. Like, you remember, was there, be, there be some times with Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco be like, hey, look, man, Anquan Bolden, I know you over there somewhere. You just throw it up. Anquan will come down with it. To have a receiver that you can do that with, it's a beautiful thing. So I really still do hope it happens. I, I do um, actually build a lot of confidence that it will happen um, with DeAndre Hopkins. Uh because I don't just because she reported this. Oh yeah, they they out on his current salary right now. No, I, like we we've seen this story a lot of times. That could just be public talk for. Hey, y'all know what y'all got. We, we we gotta there gotta be some compromise on both our sides with this whole thing. I think this could all be part of their negotiations with the Cardinals. So we'll just see how it goes, man. That would be something though. That'd be something. Two years in a row, the Baltimore Ravens and the Cardinals they trading wide receivers. They swapping wide receivers. Like right, here, here goes Hollywood. Cardinals like, all right, there, you, there goes the first round pick. And then the following year, be like, all right, hey, Ravens, here goes DeAndre Hopkins. And Ravens be like, all right, what are they going to give up? We'll see. If we do see. Hopefully we do see. But we'll see when we get there. Now, Lamar Jackson. Um, Josina Anderson also, she was talking to Calais Campbell about Lamar Jackson. Um, and Calais Campbell, he, he talked about how, like, as far as the fully guaranteed contracts, um, he said, that'd be nice for the NFL to get there to that point, but the only way they're going to get there is if people fight for it. And that's what Lamar Jackson is apparently doing. Um, he's fighting for it. Uh, now, something that I really, really appreciated, the agent talk, because obviously there's been a lot of people say, hey, Lamar, he needs an agent. And there's obviously some pros to having an agent. They can do a lot of the negotiating for you. They can talk to teams for you. They can get a feel for what the market is for you. They can deal with your team directly for you. They can take care of little deals and get you this and that for you. They can do a lot for you. So you ain't got to worry about it. You ain't got to do the, do the work. They can do it for you. But with all that being said, and those are some definite benefits of having an agent. So nothing wrong with that at all. And Calais Campbell was like, hey, I'm, I'm happy I have an agent because I ain't got to talk to teams directly and da da da, da. But um, as far as the contract, he made a very valid point about not having an agent, having one or not having one. He said with him, he has an agent. His agent talks to the teams and whatnot. But he said his agent's job is to get the type of deal that he wants. And said his agent, he could talk to the team and whatnot. Come back to the same thing we said on here, too, a couple days ago. 
you you can have an agent. The agent could go get whatever deal or from the team and be like, go get whatever offer. They could show it back to you. Hey, I got this offer for you. Check it out, big dog. You like it? How about this contract? And you can tell them, yes. Hey, I love it. Hey, great contract. All right, let's get it done. Let me, where, where do I sign? Or you can simply tell them no. No. I don't want that. The, 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 final, the final decision, it comes from you as a person who hired the agent. And again, having an agent is great. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's all, it, it, it could make a lot of stuff easier. But it is not the end all, be all. Just because you have an agent does not mean, all right, well, because a lot of people say, oh, yeah, if Lamar would have had an agent, this deal would have been done already. That's not true. That's not true. If he would have had an agent, again, that he could have just fielded offers from other team if there were any, he could have done that. But having an agent does not mean, all right, well, if, 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 if he had an agent, so much things would be opposite of what they are now. That's not true. It's, it's just not. But I, I thought that was an interesting little segment from uh, Calais Campbell. He also talked about um, how he uh, he had a strong offer from the Jets. And hey, again, hey, th now on this this time, it's not the Ravens winning in the battle with the with another team. But hearing that about somebody else instead of the Ravens is like wow. It's, so this is what it feels like to be on this side of things. And not to be on that side. But, yeah, he said he had a strong offer from the Jets. Said he talked to Aaron Rodgers and stuff and whatnot. And um, Calais Campbell on the Jets would have been nice. And I think um, I think him being on there would have been – it, it would have made life easier for him. I think on, for Atlanta – I'm, I'm, I'm kind of naive to how that defense is, so I don't know. But as far as him being on the Jets, I think life would have been made easier for him because they already got so many defensive pieces in place. I, I feel like he could have came there or went there and been a strong supporting cast member. He wouldn't have to be a focal point of the defense, but he would make a strong defense even stronger, but he wouldn't have to do as much. They wouldn't be relying on him as much as they are, as much as like the Falcons may be or even the Ravens would be. Because Ravens really relied on Calais Campbell a lot. And a lot of times, as, as crazy as this offseason has been, that's something that um, I forget about a lot. Well, not forget that he's not on the Ravens, but I kind of do forget that he's not on the Ravens because we've been so used to him being on the Ravens, and now he's not going to be there. He's going to be on another team. But him going on just seeing the Anderson's podcast, the crew, it gave me that reminder, like, hold up. Calais Campbell ain't going to be there anymore. He, he's not going to be with the Ravens anymore. And I was like, oof, well, young guys got to really step up. And that's, that's going to be a significant loss. That's going to be a significant loss. Um, run defense, for sure. Uh, we ain't going to see that, that long arm um, wingspan grabbing people and be like, oh, you ain't going nowhere. We ain't going to see that no more. So now Michael Pierce, uh, who missed about 99% of the last season because he got hurt in the first game, I think. Um, I think it was the first game against the Jets, but I don't, I don't remember. But either way, Michael Pierce, he missed a, a majority of last season. A uh, lot going to be – he's going to be relied on. Um, Broderick Washington. Uh Travis Jones in his second year. So, yeah, man. Ravens, um, they brought Brent, Brent Urban back. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But, yeah, that's, that, that's, a, that's a big loss right there. But I hope he does well in at Atlanta. Uh, so, we'll see. But, anyway, um, just wanted to let y'all know about that stuff. Uh, and she, Josina Anderson, she also talks about how she hopes Lamar um, – comes back to the negotiation table, and, and he could just talk to the Ravens some more um, so they can get this thing worked out. She also, they also talked about the possibility of um, the 49ers and the Ravens possibly uh, doing a trade there. Uh, but she just seen the answer. She's like, no, 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 just, no don't, don't even think about it, Lamar. She said, just, just talk, talk to the Ravens, man. So we'll see how everything goes. And uh, as we have been, we'll just continue to be patient. With this entire process. I mean, even if you aren't a patient person with this entire process, you got no choice but to be because you got to wait it out anyway. So if you're patient or you're not patient, you still got to wait out the process. So, yeah, that's that. But anyway, I love y'all team. Keep it clean. I appreciate y'all team. Keep it clean. And let's make this a great Friday. We out.